please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Welcome to the Ren's Point of View podcast. Today, I'm sat down with a very special guest, a very inspirational brother, um, a guy that's come through adversity, come through to the other side of it, and is very, very, very inspirational and productive. Um, I really need to, needed to get and sit down with this guy to pick his brain and see how he sees the world, how he's become the person he is now, and what motivates him to do the good that he does. Musa, also known as Moses. Yep. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, pleasure, man. Pleasure. Okay, what we're gonna do? We're gonna start at the beginning. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go all the way back. Yeah. Um. Where are you from? Where are your parents from? Yeah. And where did you grow up? Okay. So my parents, my mum is Jamaican, mm. born and bred. My father is German. Um, but growing up, my father left when I was around, I'd say five or six. Um, So growing up, it was just me and my mum, no siblings around. I was brought up in South London, borough of Lewisham, uh, an area called Broccoli. When I got to around, I'd say year seven, my mum made a decision. What age, what age is that? It's around 12, 11. Cool, cool. So my mum decided because of what was happening, our area, in particular, the case of Damilola Taylor. I remember that. So that happened very close to where I lived. Damilola was 10 when he sadly passed away, the same age as, my, age as myself. Mm. My mum thought, okay, escape London, moved to Sheffield, which is up north, South mm. Yorkshire. Okay. My mum, like I said, strong black Jamaican woman. She doesn't understand certain things within, within England and the culture. So she didn't realise the stuff that was happening in London mm. was also happening in Sheffield, Manchester, Reading, everywhere. Okay. So anyway... Started in Sheffield, enrolled into a new secondary school, didn't know anybody. The area that I lived, though, in Sheffield was, I describe it to people, have you seen the program Shameless? Yeah, yeah. Run down. Proper council estate. Proper chav, council chav estate. Chav council estate. Chav. Yeah, yeah. Not really any other um, ethnic minorities, black Asian families in that area. Okay. Me and my mum have come, I think there was an Asian family and a Somali family on this whole estate. Mm-hmm. So my mum, she wanted the best for me always. She always does. Mm. So she wanted me to go to a good school. Mm. The school that I went was in the other side of Sheffield. Mm. So I'd have to get two, three buses in the morning to get there. Mm. Like I said, this school was in a good area, but it had a lot of people coming from another side of Sheffield what were from a more rundown area, mainly black, Asian, mm-hmm. kind of council estate. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I re- enrolled into school in year seven. Um, and for me in school, I had two sets of friends. Mm-hmm. I had good friends that were doing the right things, getting on with their studies, doing what they're meant to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I also had bad friends that were getting in trouble, ignoring the teachers, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's up into secondary school. Mm-hmm. So, um, how did you find adjusting to Sheffield? You're a London boy, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, you go to you're living in an area. There's no, there's no, there's no black people, black families. No, there's no ethnic minorities. Nah. How did you find adjusting at that age? In that area, I was I was out. I was mingling mm. with younger people, standard stuff, playing football with your neighbours. Mm. But I could see racism directly from young people around me. Mm whether they're calling the local f- um, Asian family the P word mm. and these types of things. And I never agreed with it. Mm. I never agreed with it. Um, but I started chilling with them a lot and that was kind of my first introduction into crime. Mm. So it started off as petty things, just robbing cars, burning, burning them out. Uh, At what age? That's again, yeah, 7, 13, 12, 13. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't really see it as major crime. It was yeah. more like an adrenaline, it's a bit of fun. Were you driving them or were you just breaking them and burning them out? I personally wasn't driving. But I, you, as a collective, there yeah. were drivers, there at, were that drivers age, at that age? At that at that age and a few years older. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Late so there was a mix, there was a mix. There was a mix of yeah, us, right? Yeah. I was more like a tag along, mm. but I'm seeing what they're doing, mm. taking in a lot of knowledge from this. Mm. Um, but... Going back to the school side of things now, mm. I had a whole next batch of friends. Okay. On the other side. So, so the, the school, the school friends were more the black people. Yeah. Ethnic, ethnic, like urban. Pro- yeah, predominantly I'll say black, 
Yemeni, mm. a lot of Yemenis in Sheffield okay. and Somalis. Okay. I used to be around a lot of Somalis growing up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I used to be around them quite a bit. Mm. And I'll say when I got to about year eight, year nine, mm. is when I started now chilling with them in their areas. Okay, so you, you because you're, you're older now, you just go and chill there. Literally, a yeah, yeah, yeah. bit, bit more freedom, yeah, be yeah. around them more. Yeah. Um, Who was doing the car, the car theft on burning? Was it people in your area or people from the other side of town? People in my area. Okay. So the area I live, that mm. was the, the local... That's their thing. That's yeah. their thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah graffiti, I get that. I get that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. burning cars. Burnouts, burnouts, yeah, torture, just, yeah. Yeah. So my other friends, they mm. weren't really into that type of thing. Mm. Later, like I said, year eight, year nine, I had a very good friend, a Somalian friend whose house I used to go to on a regular, mm. right? But he had an older brother mm. that was very well known in this estate. This area is called Pittsmore. It's a very well known area in Sheffield. Okay. And um, he was known. He was always nice cars, jewelry. Yeah. Sometimes if he saw us in the park, give you a little five, ten pounds to go shop, get chicken and chips, whatever. Yeah, Sweet. Yeah. So anyway, one day I'm with my brethren in his yard now. Mm. And the older brother has come in. We're playing FIFA, chilling. He's like, oh, Moses, do you want to make a bit of change quick? So I'm thinking, yeah, like, what do you want me to do, though? Mm. He's literally giving me a rucksack. He just said, run across into the park. You're going to see a man on the bench. Give the man this bag, but do not look in it, and I will give you £50. I'm thinking, £50 cash. Now, I come from not a great home. Yeah. Um, £50 is a lot of money for me. Yeah. At, at kid, what age? This is year eight. I would say year eight, so year nine. 13, 13 14. 14. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of money. I'm thinking £50 yeah. to go there, to just drop that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Done it. I'll be honest. I didn't even look in the bag. Mm. I was so naive. Thought, Let me just drop it. Come back. Mm. Two minutes. Give me two £20 notes and a £10 note. Mm. £50. Mm. I was happy. Gas mm. ringing my bridges. Yeah, £50. Link me. Da, 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 da. Mm. That was gone in space of a minute. Mm. But what happened from there, he continued to kind of contact me. Mm. Say, look, do you want to come make another 50? Da, 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 da. Mm. In a nutshell, he turned me into his drug runner. Okay. Now, when I got into my field of work that I'm doing now with young people, mm. I learned about the process of grooming. Mm -hmm. Something that I never really thought had happened to myself. Mm -hmm. But when I reflect and I look back at the scenarios and what happened, it mm. was basically grooming. Yeah. Um, fast forward now, I've got to about, say, 15. Mm. This is going into like year 10. Um, I'm running around for this guy. I'm missing school. My mum, like I said, she's very naive. How much money are you making doing that? When I was running around for them, mm. I was making literally 100 pound a day, just petty money. But outside, was, but outside of school, of 14, 15, you're making 100 pound a day. 100, 100 so pound or less sometimes. It depends because I don't know how much you know of the game, but mm. I was getting money taken off me for, oh, you, you've lost this amount of food, so we've got to take this off. Oh, okay. You know them little okay, tricks? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, so I thought he was calling you for like one-off drops. Like, you know that? No, it, so it started as that. But now you're fully... But now I'm fully... Running around. Running around. Yeah, like yeah. I'm missing school. Mm -hmm. They're sending letters to my mum saying to my mum, no, 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 I'm in school. Da, da, da. I'm just mm. gassing. I'm, li okay. I'm, li I'm lying to her. Yeah, yeah, Right? So anyway, that's happened. Now, the situation went a bit left in, in Sheffield where there were two groups of people say the somalis mm. and the rest of the man them mm. right once upon a time we're all together mm. for whatever reason i don't know the detail it's split up like i said i was friends of a lot of the somalis mm. but i was also friends with the other side mm. of man them which ended up in bloodshed people getting hurt things got very serious until ultimately now there was a party that was going on one night. Mm. Now, this party was in an area where I sh you might say I shouldn't go because of my affiliation with this gang and stuff. Mm. But I was like, like I said, I had good friends and bad friends. So I feel like I was living two lives. So I was like, no, nah, I don't really, I'm not business. I'm, I'm going to still go to the party. Mm. My brethren just didn't go. Mm. Anyway, I've come out at the end of the night, literally socializing with my friends, looking around as you do. Mm. And I've seen three guys just hooded up. One of them had a thing on his face at the back. From a young age, I smoked a lot of cannabis, mm. alcohol. I was very paranoid, anxiety. So I'm thinking, wow, who's that? Who's that? Anyway, they're coming towards me now. Mm. I've clocked Somalis who my people are beefing. Mm. Boom, boom. Jetted. I've gone. Jetted out of there. But the problem is the area 
like I said, I didn't go to that area frequently, so I didn't know the area. Yeah. I'm running around random roads now, banging on people's doors, literally pleading, please, can you let me in your house? Mm. No one let me in. Mm. Ended up with them catching me up, run out of breath, mm. pulled out a machete. Mm. Now, I got taught by elders certain things growing up. One of them things was, if you are getting chased or run down, make sure you are in a lit area. Don't mm. go down an alley where no one can't yeah, see yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So i basically gone like in the middle of a main road and there's like houses on either side. Mm. It's night time, but it's kind of lit up. Mm. Side of the road, boom, can't really do nothing. One of them pulled out a long metal bike chain. Mm. He's rasping on the back of my head. Mm. I'm now on the floor, mm. kicking, 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 trying to get them away. And that's when I see the, the other Donny with machetes waving it. Mm. Caught me on my leg. Mm. Didn't even notice at the time. Mm. Little chip on my head. And it was a youth worker mm. that actually was driving past and saw Dave scattered off. Mm. He's now bundled me into his car. Mm. He's trying to take me to hospital. I said, no, 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 no. Take me to my block. Take me to the block. Because mm. I needed to link my man and let them know what happened. Literally burst in my boy's yard. I'm covered in blood. They're like, what's going on? I'm like, bro, I'm just got jumped by these man. Da, 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 da. Mm. And then it kind of went all left from there. Okay. The outcome of that? The outcome of that? Mm. Not something I, I'm... I'm I'll talk about. I'll talk about it. No, no, no. But no I, can, like, I can talk about yeah. it, but I just want to say it in the right way. Because any of the You don't want to glamorize it. No, I don't want to glamorize anything. It, or think, people, people think it's cool. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'd say within a couple of days, these lot have now gone into the local town centre in Redding, uh, Redding Sheffield, mm -hmm. looking for the guys that were linked to what happened to myself. Mm. They've come across a young Mali boy, Somali boy, right? Mm. I'll be honest. This boy was not at the party. Mm. He had nothing to do with what happened to myself. Mm. They've approached him, broad daylight, mm. stabbed him in retaliation. Mm. The boy passed away. Oh, wow. When he passed away, that's when reality really kicked in. Mm. It's in the paper, on the news. My mum has found out. Mm. Now I'm trying to tell her what's going on. She don't understand. I've got no kind of like male figures around me giving me advice. I've only got my brethren on the roads. Smoking a lot of weed. It's the same, 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 same circle, isn't it? You're bridging on the road. Yeah. Okay? Don't gotta advise you anything good. You know what I mean? The thing is, for me, I saw them as like my family. Mm. I had a loyalty to them. We mm. look out for each other. We've all got the similar backgrounds, mm. etc. Um, and when that situation happened, that's when my mum she came became scared. Mm. She got, I can't stay in Reading, uh, Sheffield no more. Yeah. I need to move. Yeah. I said to her mum, I can't move. Mm. I've got a loyalty. I, I, I didn't say I've got a loyalty, but I, I said I can't go yeah. in it. It's like, it's like you're leaving Amanda, isn't it? Yeah, these times I'm around, f I think 15, 16. Okay. Yeah, so I was a bit, I had a bit more. So of were a, you out of school completely or was school no, half still, and half? I was still going in. So oh. with the drug running now, it's for a period of time, but mm. then it came like a shift thing where I could do it like after school or oh, okay, do yeah, this yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. So I was still juggling school. Mm. But I wasn't getting my education. Okay. I left school with no GCSEs. Okay. Poor. But I, teachers said I was very smart, mm. but I couldn't just. I couldn't adapt to the classroom environment and listening to teachers and learning stuff that I didn't really see as beneficiary mm. at the time. Mm. So, <sighs> yeah, my mum has now said, look, I'm going. I've ended up staying. Mm. She got so she moved and you stayed? She moved to Reading. Okay. I was like, mum, I don't even know where Reading is. Yeah. Sounds like some village in Wales. I'm not going. <laughs> I'm, not <laughs> I'm not going to Reading, yeah. yeah? I'm staying where I am. I'm sorry. We'll keep in touch. Mm. The council estate that we lived, mm. she ended up leaving me in that house. Oh, wow. Which was a mistake. Mm. It now became the man them spot. Mm. Everyone's chilling at the yard. No authority, um, no authority in the house. No authority. Whatever, yeah, yeah. I'm out to all hours, mm. getting deeper in this game now. Mm. Other things are happening. My 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 yard became like the spot to link up and... If formulate, we, formulate, plan, block. Formulate yeah, yeah, plans, yeah? Yeah. 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 So... Um, Fast forward now, it got to a point where I thought, you know what? How long did you have the house to yourself? Probably about a year. Okay. A long time. It was a while. Yeah. It was a while. And then my mum has given me a talk mm. one time and said, look, Moses. Did you go Did you go visit her in Reading? Or was it, you didn't at all? At all. Okay. I was not trying to go to Reading. Okay. You got, and because I was so entrenched in this madness, mm. my mindset was like, I can't even go anywhere any day yeah. because every day I have to be active. Yeah, yeah. I have to make sure the mandem are in contact. Yeah. 
the, if I if I go Reading to visit my mum mm. and Sutton is Happens. happening the ends, my yeah. name, what are you doing in how the ends? Uh, yeah. And it's mad because I'm going to visit my mum. Mm. But this is the reality of the roads and how the game is. Yeah. So fast forward, yeah, my mum's giving me a chat. She goes, come down for the summer. Mm. Just check it out. Trust me. She goes, there's black people here. Cause I've I've been brought up like a black household. I don't know any of my white side. Mm. So that was quite a big thing for me, being around people that I can relate like to. Yeah. yeah, I'm not racist or nothing. Yeah. You understand? But no, nah, but it's what you're accustomed to. Yeah, it's not no no. There's no racism in no, that. No, if you're no. accustomed to something, that's what you're accustomed to. Isn't it? That's it. Yeah. So it was the summer of 2008. Yeah. I've ended up coming to Reading for the summer. For the summer. So I'm you haven't said I'm coming for good. You're coming out for the summer. I'm coming for the summer. Okay. Check it out. See yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Right. The same day I've come off the train. Mm. Remember, I had my suitcase. Mm. Come out the station. Looking what did you think when you got out of the station, first of all? Your first impression. You know when you got off the train? Yeah. You walked out of your suitcase. You looked around. What was your first impression? I thought it looked more like a city than the original vision that I had that of this okay. village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite a wide, yeah. loads of people. Yeah. Cool. I'm walking through the town centre, mm. right? I've got to Broad Street Mall. Mm. At the back of Broad Street Mall, there used to be a, the Mango Club. The Mango Night Club, yeah. Right? Yeah. It was all locked off mm. by police, mm. taped up. I think, well, what's going on here then? Mm. I've asked the officer, what happened? Mm. So the young boy, he died last night. Mm. Uh, he got attacked, etc. And I'm thinking, wow. So Reading's like that. Mm. Same things that's happening. Sheffield, yeah. Sheffield, yeah. London mm. is in Reading. Mm. Anyway, cool. I've now enrolled into college. Mm. New mindset. Didn't know anybody. Um, got a job, mm. so I was working at Foot Locker. Okay. That's where a lot of people know me from. Okay. Even yeah, my yeah. friends told today. Yeah. Because I have always had this hustler mindset. Which Foot Locker in the butt? Mm. I probably met you there. Probably. I think I probably did. A lot of Now people. you mentioned it. A now lot you of it. people. I think I did. And because I think I, I remember it as well. I think I remember meeting you there. Yeah. Because I was fresh, mm. I had a mad accent, mm -hmm. up north accent. Mm. So people were already like, oh, where are you from? Yeah. Start my convo. Yeah. Just the plug. You're the, you're, 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 yeah, I was yeah. the plug. You're the plug for training. I was the plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every generation has that. Exactly. Yeah, my generation had that as well. There were guys that worked in, you know what I mean? Even till now. It's a now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now. Right now. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I was the plug and then um, I'm now forming relationships with certain people in Reading. Mm -hmm. um, and that's central. So you got to meet everybody. Yeah. Everybody went there. Everybody. Everybody. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I was ev from every area, from yeah. everybody. Even people from Slough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High Wycombe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're coming to the yeah, ends yeah, to yeah. go foot locker. So I was chatting, 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 telling about myself. Yeah, take my number, mm. having outside conversations. Yeah. Boom. So um, that was going all right. Um, and college went left. Go on. College went left. Um, I got into a scrap. Okay. Some Nepalese guys, it's crazy stuff. Um, what were you doing at college? Sports, like okay. a, like a sports sp science kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was looking at get like being a physiotherapist yeah, or something. Yeah. So yeah. I love football, yeah. as you know. So yeah. I was doing sports. Yeah. Um, yeah, got into a fight, yeah. silly stuff. Over uh, what? Pardon? Over what? Stupidness. Literally. So there's Nepalese guy in my class, right? Mm. And I can't remember the disagreement we had, but I've ended up leaving class i was going home because i lived in junction when i landed in reading mm. junction was my spot mm. so i'm walking as i'm walking out you've got like the smoking area mm. see about 20 nepalese man bury them plus the guy who i had an argument with mm. as i'm walking they're all clocking me so i'm like brother you okay like what's up mm. come towards me but they're all coming Again, another thing I got taught growing up is if you're going to get tucked in, mm. make sure you throw that first bang yeah, and yeah, you get yeah. one of them. Fact. So he's come for fun. This yeah. Punked him. Mm. I see them coming towards me. They've picked up, you know them, um, you know like on this floor you have like wet signs and yellow signs. If you yeah, 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 yeah. They've yeah. got that, picking yeah. it, trying to launch it at me. Wow. Um, da -da 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 -da, like mm. the security's come, stopped it. Mm. Done anyway. Mm. So... Yeah, college went left from there mm. and then got ming mingled around the wrong people mm. in Reading mm -hmm. who kind of got me back, back, in, into, back yeah. into the game. Yeah. Um, that was just running around for them, making mm. a bit of change. Mm. So you stopped working Foot Locker? 
Go on to yeah. that. Because Foot Locker, I was doing so well in there. Mm. They didn't know what was happening behind the scenes, but I was. they liked how I was good customer service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They offered me like a manager's role, mm. but I had to do it full time. Okay. I was like, I can't, I'm going to college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I allowed it, mm. started doing a college thing, mm. but I had no money coming in. Okay. So now I'm, I'm thinking in my head, I need to make money. Yeah. I'm at that age. I'm in an area. I don't even have anyone to help back me up. Mm. Mum's at home, I can't ask her for no money. Yeah. And that's kind of where, yeah, went a bit left from there. How old were you then? 18. Okay. So 18, 19, yeah. Okay, so from that point, it gets even more interesting because you ended up in Middle East, right? Yeah, Saudi, yeah. Okay, so you're Muslim, right? Yeah, so I'll go into that because that kind of ties into when I first moved to Reading. Okay, cool. As I said, I was around a lot of Yemenis, a lot of Somalis growing up in Sheffield. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know Islam already? I knew kind of yeah. the attributes mm-hmm. of Islam by going to my friends' houses, seeing mm-hmm. how they operate, mm-hmm. hearing and learning certain things, seeing them pray, etc. Mm-hmm. Growing up, I was a Christian. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other story, to be fair. Mm-hmm. The, sto- <laughs> the reason why my name is Moses, mm-hmm. going back to my mother and father, my father was a Jew. Okay. Following Judaism. Okay. My mother was a Christian. Mm. The whole reason why they broke up mm. was because my mu- my father wanted my mum to become a Jew. Okay. So I used to go to certain Jewish gatherings, mm. have to wear a kippah, a small hat, mm. Star of David mm. growing up. And my mum explained to me, it got to a point mm. where I couldn't do this anymore. Mm. She felt uncomfortable. It wasn't her belief. She was doing it for him. Mm. Um, and they kind of departed. Mm. But as well as that, he had an alcohol problem. Okay. So he completely just disappeared off yeah, the scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got back in touch with him later on in my life, but that's a bit, bit of a different story. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I learned about Islam through my friends. And then I had a very good friend, to be fair, in Sheffield, mm. Pakistani guy. Mm. And um, he used to come in to school all the time in year 11. I remember, mm. I think he was in sixth form. And he'd have his trousers rolled up to his ankles. Mm. He'd be wearing a uh, thobe. He'd have a miswak. Mm. And it intrigued me, like, what is this thing in your mouth? I remember I said to him, why have you got a tree in your mouth? Mm. He said, no, this is the miswak. This is what it is. This is what it means, etc." So when I now moved to Reading, I had a piece of Islam already. Mm. Then in college, I met a friend mm. who was also a Riva, a Muslim. Mm. They started giving me dawah. Mm. And they sent me to a shop on Oxford Road, which mm. is no longer there. Mm. Um, went to that shop, picked up some books, spoke to the owner of the shop, mm. and he advised me to come to some talks, some lectures with him mm. at the PCC, Pakistani Community Centre, in Junction. Mm. I was going there for about three months, learning, learning, learning. Mm. And alhamdulillah, from there I took my shahada. Nice. So, what was the transition from that? So, you're, you were running around on the roads, yeah? How long did it take from... The roads. How did that go in Reading, first of all? Before we get to revert to Islam, yeah. there's a there's a there's a piece missing there, right? Yeah. So how did that go on the roads in Reading? That was again running around for certain people. But how how did it go? Like did did did, did it unravel? You know how before? Yeah. Like it, there was no I would say there wasn't bloodshed or mm. beef, mm. but I was now meeting drug users mm. that I didn't really meet before because I don't want to go into the specific drugs. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on, when go I was in Sheffield, mm. the drug users for that fi- thing that I was delivering were completely different. Different okay. to these. to these. So th- those ones that I would take it were more... Professionals, everyday yeah, people. Everyday people, professional. Um, yeah. not, but these are nitties. Nitties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nitties, nitties. Yeah. Mm. So I'm now meeting these people. Um... And that's kind of where it triggered my mind in terms of this is mad. Yeah, my doing and what is what I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah. Like this isn't right. Some people look at drug users on the street and say, "Oh, you're a crackhead, you're a nitty." Mm. I, I explain it to kids all the time. Mm. So if you speak to a drug user mm. and talk about their journey of where they came from in life, how did they end up on this drug? Mm. Understand that, mm-hmm. and you'll look at them very differently. Mm. Because I know young people, my age, you might know people, mm. that were once upon a time, normal people, mm. and now they're drug users. Yeah, yeah drug depression. Users. It could be for anything. Mm. Depression, they, trauma, yeah. anything that's triggered that, and yeah. now they're stuck in that position, isn't it? Literally. Like you can't, they're human beings at the end of the day. You can't, you know what I mean? Literally. So, yeah, so I was doing that for a while. 
And then I kind of just branched off, started doing my own type of thing. Mm. Got a little job at the same time. Mm. Um, doing what this now? This was working in a little call center. Okay. Yeah, so I was working in a little call center. Always had good customer service skills. Mm. So I was just juggling a bit of both. Mm. And then, yeah. Yes, it gets, it's very professional, isn't it? Mm. Call center. Working a call center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You have to. You're, to you're, people on the phone. Exactly. Taking bank details. Like, yeah, yeah. You got, you got to be articulate. You can't you can't get on there and not be... You know, okay. So from reverting to Islam yeah. in Reading. I heard you ended up in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Okay. So that happened later in my life. Later in your life. Yeah. Okay. What happened? Mm. Um, I went for Umrah for Saudi with some of the brothers. Mm -hmm. And while I was over there, they mentioned about a university. What's called. Umrah? So, so it's a pilgrimage mm -hmm. that Muslims do. Mm -hmm. um, you also have Hajj, which is the... No, I know about Hajj, where you got, yeah. that's the Mecca, isn't it? Yeah, so mm -hmm. Umrah is like what we could say the lesser pilgrimage. Okay. But done Umrah, and they said there was an uh, Islamic university mm -hmm. over there where people come from all around the world mm -hmm. to study, learn Islam, learn Arabic, mm -hmm. right? I ended up applying, as well as all of us. We thought, give it a go, let's apply. Mm -hmm. um, probably two years later, mm -hmm. I've got contacted from the imam of the mosque in Reading, mm -hmm. saying that you've been accepted into Medina University. Mm -hmm. I was like, huh? Because I completely forgot. Yeah, yeah, two years. I completely forgot. Time. It was two years ago. And he explained, do you remember we went for Umrah? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. So you're in, you, you're going to Saudi. I said, subhanAllah, like, I was very shocked. These times, I wasn't sure if I was going to go or not. I need mm. to understand it a bit more, speak to my family, mm. etc. Ultimately, I ended up making the decision to go. Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple of brothers, obviously, you know, Abdurrahman Shima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He, he was already over there. Okay. Because so he went early, didn't he? Yeah, he went, he, he really went early. A long time ago. He disappeared a long time ago, yeah. But Shema, alhamdulillah, he's a good brother that I've known from when I took my shahada. He mm. was even there. Okay. So he's always been in my life. Yeah. Um, kept in touch while he was in Saudi. Mm. So I could see. So you had somebody there you knew was there already. It's, it makes it a lot easier. It did, yeah. but he was in Mecca. Okay. I was in Medina. Okay, yeah, So yeah, yeah. we could keep contact via phone and stuff, mm. but in terms of the city... The yeah, the layout. Yeah, 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 yeah. To be honest, there was another brother, Abdul Latif. He mm. was also a revert mm. in Kohli, mm. and he went to Saudi a few months. Abdul Latif. Yeah, Matthew. Matthew what? Uh, Ratigan. You might know DC. Probably by face. Probably by I'm face. He's from Kohli. I'm from Kohli. Yeah, so I would know him. They're from Kate's Grove. Okay. Oh yeah, now that's not quite Coley. Kate's Grove is Kate's Grove. I can't Kate, um, Coley. No, no, no. Kate's Grove is Kate's Grove. Yeah, Coley's Grove. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say Coley. No, I probably, I probably know him. I probably know If I see a picture, yeah, yeah. I definitely know him. I definitely okay. know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's a few years younger than me, mm. but he also went over and was in Medina. So, mm. to be fair, I had that link. Mm. And then the brothers from Reading, from the mosque, were telling me there's other brothers. People you could contact there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I was linked up. Well, financially, how does that work? Do you have to pay for that? So it's a scholarship. Mm. So the king of Saudi mm. was funding students from all around the world to come. Mm. They'll pay you like an allowance each month. Mm. Very well, to live. To live. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was living... Well, accommodation covered. I was living on, on the accommodation on the campus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of the brothers mm. would bring their wives over, mm. find separate accommodation, mm. have a have another job teaching English or science. Oh, hold on, hold on. So does... Uh, the king of Saudi cover the cost of that, bringing your wife over and everything. No, that's, that's for saying. you to do. Okay, he will cover. So he'll cover you coming over, you living, yes, you eating, yeah. you studying, yeah. and that's covered. Yes, yeah. But obviously, so yeah, go on. They got jobs teaching. Yeah. Teaching English, so yeah. then the brothers who wanted to bring their families over mm. would have to provide themselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I didn't know any Arabic. Mm -hmm. Any Arabic couldn't read, couldn't write. I knew basic. Uh, convo very mm. small mm. um and it, yeah started going there was there for two years mm. until the war with yemen with the houthis okay. that yeah, was yeah. active yeah i ended up coming back to england on a on a holiday mm. so on a, uh, for a small period of time and um when i was back an issue arose regarding my criminal record so when I originally applied, you have mm. to do a whole check mm. and they could see my record. Mm. It was fine. They understand mm. it was from Jahiliya, from when I was a uh, non-Muslim, yeah. etc. 
and um, the king had changed over. Mm. So this is now implemented new rules. Mm. It said, oh, this student has a record, not just me, other students. Mm. I had to go to the Saudi embassy in London, mm. fight my case. These times I had Nikama, which is citizenship. Okay. So in so, Saudi? Yeah, in Saudi. Okay. Right, it was a student citizenship. Yeah, yeah. And um, I explained, look, I'm a student. Mm. I'm meant to be here. I'm going mm. back. Mm. He said, no, 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 no. You have to stay. So I ended up staying in England. Okay. Um, which, alhamdulillah. Is so you, you didn't finish the... Okay. No, 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 no. So the way it works over there, you go there for two years, you mm. go into the Mahad, mm. which is like introductory uh, Arabic, mm. learn the basics. Mm. Once you complete those two years, mm. you go into a Kuliya, mm. which is like where you study a specific subject mm. in Islam, whether that's Sharia law, Quran, mm. Arabic, the language, mm. Dawah, mm. these things. Um, and that's about five years. Mm. And then you, you can now be classed as a graduate mm. from Medina, like a lot of the brothers who come back and give Dawah. Mm. Uh, you can go on to study a degree. Mm. So this was kind of my plan. So after the degree, is that when you're in uh, Al Haji? Al Haji. What does that mean? I don't know. Al Haji. No. Al Haji. Al Haji. Ah. In my country, there's um. Where are you from? Sierra Leone. Okay, mashallah, Sierra Leone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's people that there's, there's people there like Al Haji, and they they've always these are people that have studied. I would say that's a nickname for people that they would see as. Not scholars, but people of knowledge. Of it's knowledge, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So yeah, they probably say these people. Graduated. But these people normally have studied, like you, like you said, they've been yeah. over there and studied. Yeah, and they've come back with a. I don't know if it's a degree. I don't know how it works. Yeah. Some people go there to study and mm. sit with local scholars mm -hmm. and get get knowledge via that way. Mm -hmm. But to be recognised, Medina University, mm -hmm. you've graduated from there. That's, that's a major thing. Okay. Major thing. Okay. Um, but the life in Saudi is completely different to the life here. Gone. It was hard for me to adapt. It wasn't actually. It wasn't hard for me to adapt. I'm mm. not. I didn't miss England as such. Mm. I think I missed my friends mm. um, and the fact that I was struggling to communicate with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. On a normal level. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, I picked up a lot. I mm. can now read. I can write. Mm. But it was very lonely sometimes. Mm. My roommate mm. was from Togo. Okay. Bashir. Okay. And um, he couldn't speak no English. Okay. Only Arabic, I think French, and his yeah, own. Yeah, Togo be French, yeah. Okay, French yeah. and his own language. Mm. But it made me pick up the language faster. Quicker, because now you got to speak, you, you got to communicate with him. Yeah. He, you got to teach him English, he's got to teach you Arabic. Exactly. Best way, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and subhanAllah, he was telling me his story that because his family was so poor back home, mm. a lot of the students that come from the poorer countries, Africa, certain Asian countries, right? Mm they would get their scholarship money from the king mm. and would send it back home. Send it back home to their families to survive and mm. live. And they would strive hit, while they're in Saudi, they'll go to the mosque and get free food and just live basics. Basics. Well, are they studying still? Studying. Okay, but they're still studying. They're studying. But with no, no... No wow, luxuries, wow, no money. Wow, wow. That's I, was, nice. I, was, I was helping him, yeah. you know. I yeah, got yeah. extra... A little bit extra, yeah. Come yeah. eat with me, mm. etc. But a lot of the brothers, subhanAllah, they were grinding it. Wow. I rate it, I rate it. But it's the same mentality over here. Mm. Like you see somebody from Africa and they over here they got a cleaning job. You look okay. down on them and that, but you got no idea that, that it's discipline. Yeah. That our yeah. person's funding a whole bunch of families back home. Mm. You know what I mean? It's same. But one thing you said, you said you checked your criminal record. What's your what, what record have you got? Have you been to prison and stuff? Yeah. You have? Okay. So I went to prison. I was on the mind for a small period of time. This is later in my oh. life. Well, after you come back. After no, 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 actually, no, it couldn't be after you come back because they they checked it when you came back briefly. I had a record from mm. before where I was getting bagged for mm. all this petty stuff. Mm. I probably like sh uh, street robberies, mm. petty things, mm. caught caught with a knife a couple of times, mm. right? Nothing I'm proud of. Mm. Um. So yeah, when I come back from Saudi, Mm. Um, things went a bit left family wise mm. affected my mental health mm. um, I was living in London in Tottenham so when you come back from Saudi you now move to London to Tottenham yeah okay so that was with someone who I was with mm. I was living in uh, was more precise Edmonton Edmonton yeah, Tottenham. yeah. Um, we ended up breaking up mm. and um, I had to move back to Reading mm. I hadn't been in Reading for years because, mm. like I said, Saudi, Edmonton, mm. 
I was practicing. So how many years is that? Like four years? Something four like. to five years, I'd yeah. say, where I hadn't been in touch. And when I was- so You haven't been in touch with nobody? Well, so, some, nobody at all? When I was practicing, mm. I cut off everyone. Yeah. Not that you have to. No, but it's probably for, work for you. For myself, yeah. I just need, I couldn't be around and get certain influences and mm. certain temptations. Mm. Um, so yeah, mm. I split up with this person mm. and I had to move back to Reading. Mm. And I was coming back with no money. Mm. My mum at the time was in Jamaica, mm. no family here. Mm. And I made the decision to go down the wrong path again, oh, wow. which was something I majorly regret. Mm. It was a complete change. Mm. Like I said, when I was in prison in Bullingdon, mm. I was sat there one night mm. and I was thinking, how have I ended up mm. sitting with scholars in Medina? Mm to now sitting in a cell mm. with a spice head. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah, I get it, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the prison thing came later. I basically got back on road, mm. got myself in, in some trouble, mm. ended up going on remand. Mm. That was my first ever time in prison, mm. my late 20s. Mm -hmm. So I escaped a long time mm. through, through not going to prison. Mm. Um, when I went there, that really, really opened my eyes. What was it, drugs? Yeah, oh, okay. related to drugs. Yeah. Um, Why did you open your eyes? From the time I landed there, from the time I'm in the the sweat box on the on the on the truck, mm -hmm. and I'm looking out the window, and I'm just seeing the world carry on, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm gonna be going to this cage, mm -hmm. right? I've got children as well, five. Okay. And I best I bust a tear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was busting tears thinking what is going on yeah. what I'm, like this is crazy not the fact of prison itself but the fact of how I've ended up exactly in this is position. this your life basically is this, is my, this life? my life you yeah. know what I mean like, yeah, 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 yeah I get it um, so anyway I remember the first night they took me in introductory wing I'm in my cell I remember when I woke up I thought I was at home oh, wow. I keep my pillow on the, uh, my phone under my pillow mm -hmm. Where's my phone? Oh crap, I'm in jail. <laughs> I'm in jail. Yeah. Johnny's banging at my door. Some one of the one of the guys on the wing. Mm. It's like, yo. It's like, yo, where you from? I was like, from Reading. Where you from? It's like from Swindon. Mm. It's like, okay, cool, cool. It's like, what you got? What you got for me? I was like, huh? <laughs> at these times I didn't know what he meant. Mm. What have you got for me? Mm. I said, brother, I'll just come on remand. Mm. I don't know what, what you're talking about. He's like, okay, say no more. He's, he's jetted off. It's open up now, social time, right? A mm. couple other guys are from, from Oxford, I was cool with them on their introductory wings. So I'm saying, right, but actually one of these brothers come up to my door. He's asking me, have you got anything? Mm. He's like, Def. he's basically saying, right, he, he's thinking mm. that you've come in either through court and you've come in with stuff on you. Through, uh, drugs. Drugs, phone, et yeah, cetera. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, right, nah, I ain't got nah, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Anyway, there for a couple of weeks. They now said, you're going on to the main wing. Mm. I said, what wing am I going on? He said, D wing. Mm. I'm asking the other guys on the introduction, what wing are you going? C, B, D, A. I'm saying, well, I'm going on D. They're like, oh, D's a bit mad, you know? <laughs> I'm like, is it? Mm. Like, yeah, mad things happen over on D wing. I'm mm. like, come, 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 come. Playing it cool, playing mm. it cool. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Gov's come to get me now. Mm. I've got my bag. I'm walking, obviously I'm tall, innit? Mm. Oh, I'm just thinking, who, if I've got beef with anyone, if my mm. people's got beef with anyone, am yeah. I going to, rah, yeah. but playing it cool. Yeah. Bro, as I'm walking through the jail, D-wing, I'm hearing, rah, 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 like some, some chanting. Yeah. I'm thinking, rah, I'm well, as you get into D-wing. As I'm getting to okay. D-wing, yeah. I'm saying to the gov, oh, gov, what's, what's D-wing like? Mm. She's like, boy, I'm thinking, nah, not you as well. <laughs> not, <laughs> Is it that bad? Mm. Like, yeah, it's not the greatest. So I've arrived. Now, when I've arrived, it's social time. Mm. So you've got the different spurs, right? One, two, three. I'm in the middle. Mm. Yeah, everyone's looking down, looking down, mm. looking around, thinking, oh, it's a problem. Playing it cool. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, they figure out what spur I'm going on. Mm. One brother has shouted, yo, Moses. Mm. I'm looking around, thinking, oh. yo, Looking up, it's my boy. Okay. My boy, Pimp, okay. from, from Whitley in Reading. Okay. Known him for years, but he was in jail. Yeah. 
So I'm like, yo, yo, what's good? He's come running, mm. saying, God, put him on my, put him on my wing, mm. put him on my wing. Mm. So like, yeah, yeah, put me over there, put me over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I'm on there now. Mm. He's giving me the tour, mm. show me the cell, bear man from Reading. Mm. But these were people who I didn't know particularly. Okay. Yeah. But the way I saw it is like their rule was like, we stick together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're on in there together. now. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it would call. Yeah, this man, this man, yeah. Even mm. man from Newbury, mm. the begging this Redding team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Redding's the main, Redding's the main, the main hub, innit? Like, yeah. Where are Redding you from? Oh, yeah, you're yeah. New, I'm like, you're from Newbury, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not from Redding, <laughs> yeah? But yeah. cool, innit? You're part of cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm saying, right, what happened earlier? Because man's hearing mad things. They're like, bro, there's a couple of men from London mm. on the wing, kicked off, we tucked them in. So them man basically moved. No, sorry, Milton Keynes. Okay. Yeah. A couple of men from Milton Keynes, they moved to them. Mm. I'm saying, right. So. Yeah, I got um got put into a cell with a brother. He was from Newbury. He was in there for food. Mm. But he was always in and out of jail, in oh. and out of jail. Yeah. Um. So one night now, mm. I'm in my cell. TV's on. I'm on the top bunk. He's on the bottom bunk. Mm. Obviously, them man have got your zoo coming in, tobacco, mm. yeah. I'm smoking, chilling. Cool. So one time now, I'm seeing bare smoke coming up mm. to top. So I'm like, yeah, you got buds? It's like, no, 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 no. So I'm thinking, bro, bro, that smells mad. What's that, bro? But if I look down, my man's like a vegetable. He's literally like zombie fight. Mm. So I'm like, yo, yo, brother. Literally slapping him. Mm. Water. Oh, yeah. Thinking, bro, what's going on? Banging in my thing. I'm like, yo, P, P's on the other side, isn't mm. it? Yeah, yo, yo, P. Mm. Hey, my man, what's going on? Mm. It's like, bro, he's a spice head. Okay. Thinking, bro. So, next day now, I've had to check him. I'm saying, brother, mm. I don't know what you're taking or what's going on in your life, but mm. I beg you don't do that in the cell. Mm. Yeah? So, he's like, cool. Um, and then that's when I kind of first learned about Spice and mm. how it comes in. So, it, co- it coming on this A4 piece of paper, mm. taking off a little bit, putting it onto the vape, it's bunning it. But it's obviously, the paper's soaked. In so, oh, so, they soak it and then dry it. Yeah, but, then the, but the paper's got is now. Yeah, so it's, like, it's literally an A4 piece of paper. Mm. They've soaked it in rat poison, all of this stuff that spice is made from. It's coming in via letters, etc., other means. Mm. Then you literally break off the tiniest piece worth piece, mm. tiniest piece, whack it onto the vape, mm. smoke that away. This is what this brother and a few other men on the wing was doing. Yeah, that's crazy, crazy stuff. That's crazy, crazy stuff. I had a, I had a brethren from college. Um, was he from Gambia? One of the countries in Africa, anyway. He went to jail for a period of time, brother. When he came out, mm. I saw him in Whitby. He was a different man. Okay. He come up to me these times. I was on roll. He's like, "Bro, can you get me spice?" I'm like, "Bro, you're not you're not in jail no more. You don't need spice." He's like, "Nah, brother, I need it. I need it." He even put on loads of weight. He put on. Yeah, he looked like a different man. I don't know if it was because of the food or whatever, but he just looked like different. But yeah, yeah. he was very slow. And then he told me about when he was in there, I think he had a, a, a madness with a, a couple of men. Mm. He's not on this like beef thing. Mm. He's not like that. So he had a couple of issues with a couple of men. And um, he started, He said he started seeing like, demons and stuff in his head. Mm. They've taken him to get medication in jail, mm. but the medication made him worse. Mm. And then that's when he started smoking spice. But he, okay, okay, he, he, okay. he was told it's similar to weed. Mm. So he didn't realise. Nah, he would have realised. Ah. Like he would have realized. You reckon? Yeah, come on. Everybody, I, I never been Joe, so I, but I know about spice. Mm. You can't tell me it's similar to something. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I hear it. You, I hear you, it. you know what I mean? It's not like I hear it. it it's on a piece of paper, man. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, no, but I think it comes in at different forms. Because no, I, 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 like I thought it was. I thought was like that's what I thought. I thought it was like a leaf or something. Like I you know, like, it looked like tea. I think that that's what I thought that was the original form. Okay. I could be. I could be wrong. Yeah. But I've always known the same way as yourself. Yeah, I thought it was like a tea, like a tea something. Yeah. Yeah. But this one that I was seeing mm. was on letters. They've even said now, mm. letters that come into jail, mm. we have to photocopy. We can't just give you the original one. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 so yeah. They, so they get rid of that. So there's no point in trying to do it that way. Get rid of it. Because you don't get the original, yeah. Photocopy yeah. it. Give them the photocopy. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and then I, there was a couple more madnesses that happened. Uh, there was a brother from Reading who um, he teamed up. This is what this is what I thought was mental. Mm. So he was on Spice. Mm. He was leaving jail, mm. but he had no money to his name. He wanted to make a quick buck. Mm. He's teamed up 
with this other brother, I think he was from Newby or Thatcham, again, a spice head. Mm. They said, rah, there was a guy from London, big, black, known, I think he was from Harlesden. Mm. He was on the bottom, the mm. bottom spur here in mm. Seoul. It's like, my man's got a phone. Mm. Phone's worth about five bills, let's mm. say. Let's rob him. Mm. These two have gone down social time, yeah, burst up in his cell, locked it, Govs don't have a clue, mm. yeah. Stab up the guy. Stabbed him, stabbed him, stabbed him. The guy, so the, the beds in jail are like metal. They were drilled to the floor. Mm. So he's gone under the bed to make it as hard as possible for mm. them to get. Mm. Bro, what's happened, because they were high and intoxicated when they done this, mm. the brother from Newby, whoever, has ended up stabbing his brethren oh, wow. by accident. Okay. Dirty a slice down the face. Wow. Yeah. And this who was leaving? The brethren was leaving. Was about to leave. The one with the slice on the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, was about, about to leave. To leave. Yeah, yeah, So he's leaving with the slice on the face. Mm. He got the phone. Mm. I'm not going to say where it was kept. Mm. He went somewhere to get it. Mm. Gave it to a next man. Got the money. Transferred into his people's account. But so he sold the phone in the same prison? Yeah. That oh, was the wow. point of doing the job. Wow, wow, wow. wow that was wow. the point because wow. he knows I can make five bills. Yeah, 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 Before I leave. I'll get the phone. I'll yeah. get the food. Mm. I'll go to them, mm. say, boom, I've got this. Mm. You get your people to transfer the money to my people. Mm. Halas. That's crazy. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah I get it. But I get all, it. All of these but but the, the big black guy had a name though before that. Yeah? Big name. So it don't matter. It, does, it, it don't matter then, innit? Brother, that's one thing I learned about Joe. Mm. Doesn't matter who you are on road. Mm. Anyone can get it. Anyone and everyone is the same. Okay. No, I don't see no one f feared. Yeah. Big man. Little man. Yeah. Crackhead. Mm. Old man, it doesn't matter. It's close, con close contact, isn't it? Cage, it don't matter. It's yeah, yeah, it's cage. close contact, close contact. It's yeah, literally yeah. every man for themselves. Yeah. And you're never going to see that guy. The guy from Hazard is never going to see that guy again. But he left. He left the, he's gone. He left the wing. Yeah, he's gone. Next day. No, no, but what I mean, like, even, even after that, they yeah, come out of jail. Never going to see him again. Unless you really want to research and find a man's yeah, name but and yard. He's gonna, but yeah. nah, it's jail, isn't it? Mm. It's one of the things. Um, I remember when they came to my cell mm. and they said, you're coming out. I was so baffled. I was like, huh? Mm. He was like, yeah, you've won. Brother, the whole wing was going mad. Yeah. Bah, bah, all of that stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thinking, what? Well, I left with tears. Yeah. Because I met some beautiful people. Yeah. yeah. In that small period of time who were telling me their stories. Mm. How did you end? I want to know how you ended up here. Yeah. Tell me about your family. Da, 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 da. We have conversations. Alhamdulillah, one guy took Shahada with me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had someone take shahada with me, but while I was there, I was engaging, going to the mosque, doing the right things. I wasn't selling or getting involved mm. with madness. And uh, an Asian brother from Maidenhead, mm. he approached me and said, look, there's a guy who wants to take shahada. You feel like you could explain it to him. Yeah. So yeah, alhamdulillah, he took shahada. And that was one of the blessings, I'll say, of being in jail. Yeah, but there's, there's a reason you were there, isn't it? You weren't meant to be there in the first place. Yeah. So there's a reason you were sent there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So going to the football club now, mm. while I was there, mm. I had a lot of remorse. I had a lot of remorse, a lot of regret. Um, I myself influencing, not grooming, influencing young people to jump on road, getting mm. them to run about, doing mm. certain things. Mm. Seeing youngsters in particular from the ethnic minorities in jail. Mm. I thought, nah, so, so there has to be more. More has to be done. Because mm. I see the jail system and probation as a business. Mm. It's like a revolving door. Yeah, yeah. There are people institutionalized. Mm. Yeah. So I formed a plan that I want to give back. My passion is football. Mm. Ended up starting a football club. Mm. And yeah, but even that, when I came out of jail, mm. it was a struggle. I'm going to probation. Can I, can I carry on? Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah I, I want like to talking. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm <laughs> listening. I'm listening. Yeah? Obviously, I, I want to know how you've gone from coming out of there. I'd you, you, you even build a football club. Go on, go on, carry That's on. That's a good question. Carry on. That's what I'm saying. Carry on. Carry so, on. so mm. I've come out, mm. gone to probation. Mm. Probation, like, what do you want to do career wise? I said, look, I want to work with young people. I'll be real. You see, the time when I going back to the youth workers stopped me from yeah, yeah, yeah. the Somalis. Yeah. That really it, hit my heart. It yeah, it touched you. Yeah. And it showed me like what this guy is about. Mm. Anyone could do it, mm. but this particular man. So I said, I want to work with young people. I said, no, you've got a record, you can't. I said, huh? I said, yeah, I can. But who would be more qualified? I'm saying, yeah, I can, though. Mm. Like, they're like, no, it doesn't work. Be a, be a, be a, um, be a bricklayer. Mm. That, that type of vibe. 
construction. I said, no, I don't want to do that. Mm. Anyway, I ended up forgetting probation. You're not going to support me. Um, and a friend of mine mm. was doing some charity work, mm. giving out food to the homeless. I was inspired by this. I liked it. And um, teamed up with him, told him my idea that I want to start a football club. And um, I ended up going to Reading Community Trust, which is part of Reading Football Club. Mm -hmm. Met a gentleman called Richard Whip. He's a very well-known guy in Reading. He does a lot of work in the community. Name sounds familiar. Very well-known. And um, I pitched him my idea. Mm. Said, I want to start a football club. Has to have a charity vibe to it. I need help. I have no footballing background. Mm. I kicked ball when I was young, but I've not this academy or nothing like that. Mm. I don't even know where to start. Furthermore, I need to find players, mm. manager, basics. Mm. He said, we will provide you with the facilities. Tell us. What do you mean facilities? Like what so land? Our, our home pitch mm. is their facilities. They will, they've will. they given that to me to where's use. The, where's the home pitch? Up at Reading Football Club, up at Majeski, there's like a... a, a like an Astro, a 3G oh, nice, pitch. Nice, 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 nice. So this was amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it costs a lot of money mm. to rent every week, every week, every yeah. week. Um, And then, yeah, so I started the football club. Mm. And then when it comes to young people now, I got I got uh, contacted by some random uh, yacht. You know yacht? Who? Yacht, yacht is like the youth version of probation. No, I don't know. So, that. so young offenders mm -hmm. when they come out, they'll go to your youth offenders. So, hold on. so you've created a football team. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How did your get, get find out about you then from the football team? Mm. Okay, go on. So, because the football, I, I made a, a social media page, mm. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it was getting known. Okay, in the community. Yeah, and this random yacht worker, her name was Barbara Griffiths. Mm. I've never met her till today. Right. Okay. She called me. She said, "Oh, hi. I've heard what you're doing in the community. Da 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 da. Mm. Have you ever thought about working with young people?" I said, yes, I want oh, to. Wow. Probation, say no. Yeah. I said, okay, don't worry about that. Mm. Have you heard of a charity called St. Giles' Trust? Mm. They're based in London. Mm. I knew about it through the prison system because they do a lot of work in the prisons, mm. but I didn't know what they were about. Mm. She's like, they hire people with lived experience, mm -hmm. right? People like yourself, and they basically send you out to work with kids, do assemblies mm. all around. Mm. Cool. So... She sent me application. I said to my wife, because I hate doing stuff like that. I said, my wife, fill this out, please. Mm. Da, 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 fill it out. Send it off. St. Giles called me a few weeks later. Mm. We want to have an interview. I said, okay. Had my interview. They said you're up against. So you're still on, you're still on probation? I was on probation. Do you know what I was doing? Because mm. I didn't want to jump back on the road. Mm. I was working as a bin man. Okay. I love that job. Yeah. I love working as a bin man. Yeah, yeah. At first, I was thinking, what, what, what do you love about it? I love getting up early. Yeah, getting smelling, it all out the way, all out. Go on, smelling go on. the fresh air. Yeah, running mm. fit behind that truck, mm. dashing rubbish, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you said, mm. getting it out all of the out way. the way. And then you got your yeah. yeah so yeah, when it, yeah. I was finishing eleven o'clock, mm. twelve o'clock. Yeah, everyone's at work. Yeah, I'm now finished, and I've got next stuff I can be doing. Yeah, correct, you understand? Yeah. yeah. So. I was working as a bin man for a couple of years. I was doing the roles around here. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking when I was coming up, it's like PTSD. Is like, oh. So, uh, um, yeah. And then I had an interview. They called me. Mm. I said, you've got the job. Mm. SubhanAllah. This was life mm. changing, brother. Mm. Yeah. I was thinking, wow, these people believe in me. Mm. Started working for St. Giles. I was there for about a year or two years. What were you doing? So I was going doing assemblies. Mm based on knife crime, mm. county lines, mm. drug running, mm. realities of prison, mm. all from a lived experience angle by telling my story mm. and using the content that they provide. Mm. I was going up and down the UK. Oh, wow. Somerset. I've done a lot of work in Wales, mm. Bristol, mm. everywhere. Mm. So anyway, work knew about Give Back FC and what I was doing outside. Mm. And um, I got contacted by Thames Valley Police. Mm. Are we still going on? You still want to talk? Carry on, man. All right, cool. Carry All right. on. Listen, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm, yeah, I told you this. I want to know what makes you tick. Yeah, carry I on. Please, it, carry it. on. So, I got contacted by Thames Valley Police. Mm. I said, look, we see what you're doing in the community. Mm. We respect it. We want to, you know, team up. Mm. Money. I said, look, <laughs> mm. I'm not really feeling this. Mm. I've got my own thing with you guys. Mm. I'm not 
really you know cool. so I spoke to a few people about it mm. I had different feedback mm. some people said see what they've got to say mm. you could be that guy who kind of bridges the gap with the community and police mm. I still wasn't feeling it mm. I said look if you guys really want me to do work or in Reading or whatever it is mm. speak to my work speak to St Giles mm. do what you want through them no cool so that then they teamed up with St. Giles and they got me on a contract mm. to go into every school in Reading mm. and speak to all of the year 10 groups mm. about knife crime. Okay. Right? So I've done that. So what happened from there, I've ended up, one of my good friends from Reading, uh, Tank, mm -hmm. Thomas Jarvis, he's good friends with Shema. Yeah, Tank. Okay, cool. Yeah. So he's been working with young people for a number of years. Mm. And um, I said to him, well, I'm leaving St. Giles. And he said, look, why did you come mm. over where I am? So the mm. company I work for now is Story Group. Mm. And um, same, same kind of company as St. Giles, same charity, no? So Story Group work with young people through various means. They've got care homes mm. set up. Mm. Um, and they also do working in the schools, mentoring, etc. Mm. But a bit different to St. Giles. Mm. So um, I ended up meeting the, the big bosses at, so, uh, story group mm. um, told them my experience the football club they love the football club idea and what I'm doing in the community which mm. I liked because they need to understand this is what I'm about mm. this is why I'm kind of in, involved with all of this stuff mm. and um, yeah started at story group mm. and been there for probably about a year now so so the two main things you're doing now is give back football yeah a story group yes okay okay those are the two main things that you're concentrating on. That I'm concentrating on. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm just constant, not stop, non-stop. Because I, resp I respect it, man. I, yeah. take, I take my heart off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So been there, seen it. You know when people say like olders, OGs. You're an older. You're an OG. Mm -hmm. You know it's not about you know the guy that that they say is an OG or an older that's putting kids on the road. Yep. That cannot that person cannot qualify. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, no. If you've been there, you've seen it, yeah. and you know that the fire burns, yeah. and you've come back mm -hmm. and said, look, the fire burns, and now you're like, sure, but in the right way though. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, anybody can get up and try and do what you're doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people have tried. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the kids aren't necessarily going to listen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But It's true. You know I, I, mean? I think the lived experience attribute that St. Giles do mm. is amazing. Yeah. Um, I've got friends who always say they want to work with kids, but not everyone. It's not an easy task, mm -hmm. put it that way. It's mm -hmm. not as straightforward as people think, mm -hmm. um, especially for myself. Mm -hmm. I work with a lot of high-risk mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. kids that are involved with crime, mm -hmm. issues at home, getting kicked out of school. Mm -hmm. um, so what are you doing in mentoring then? So I do assemblies, mm -hmm. carrying on with my... So you're doing exa the same... The same the same so, thing you were doing before, the same plan is exactly what you're doing. Yeah, so okay. So what happened, mm. told story group about what I do, mm. they didn't have that already. So okay, I said, look, okay. I can provide you mm. this service. Mm. They was like, yeah, okay. bring this to the table. Mm. So now I go into schools, mm. I talk about knife crime, county lines, mm. all of these topics, mm. but I've made the content. Okay, so you tailored it yourself. Yes. So no, nobody's telling you this is how you not, you need to do it. That's probably the best way. Tailored it myself. Yeah. Delivering the content, mm. um, and then I do one to one mentoring, mm. um, which is going into schools, working with their harder to reach kids. Mm. And that's it, basically. Yeah, that's admirable, man. That's admirable. It's a, it, it's a lot. I love my job. Mm. But you, you're clearly good at it. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, but clearly, but the results speak for themselves himself you know what i mean like, yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. some people do say like when you're talking to three four hundred kids mm. do you really think they're taking it in but my thing is even if one mm. if one kid is thinking yeah i don't want to be on road or this guy well i'm being pressured yeah or you know what i mean because you, you know the kid ain't gonna tell you that it's, like you said you know that i'm um, the older person that gave you the bag yeah yeah, so yeah. Be, a kid could be sat at school same things happening to them exactly. right now yeah exactly. they've got nobody to talk to Nobody at home that understands. You know what I mean? Like, and the same thing's happening. They might even be scared to do that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you, you, your eyes were open when you did it. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, you knew yeah. what you were doing when you did it. Mm. You, had, you know what I mean? It's your pals, isn't it? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But it could be the other way around. They could be pressured. Yeah. And somebody that, they, they will talk to someone like you. Mm. They're going to talk to the teacher. 
well, this is it. And even sometimes in the assemblies, mm. I'll do an assembly, kids will come up to me after, they want to know, oh, what's Joe? You know, but you got, you got your socials as well, aren't you? Yeah. So the kids, will they add you? Um, Have you ever had anyone talk to you directly? Yeah. Yeah. So mainly with the give back page, because mm. we've got kids' teams. I've got an under-16s team. Yeah, yeah. What's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. How many so, teams? So I thought just one team. Nah. That like one age. Like I saw, I watched a video with the like adults playing. So when I started in 2020, mm. I started off with one men's team. Yeah, that's the one I've seen. That expanded mm. into two men's teams. Mm -hmm. So right now I've got about 60 men mm. on the books across both teams. Mm. Um, two managers or one manager? Four. So two managers for each team. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you might know Lorenzo. Yeah, I know Lorenzo. I'm a school Lorenzo. He's manager of my reserves. Yeah, I, saw, I watched the video. I see. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. I watched the video. I see. I see him on the sideline for us. Then I see him on the pitch. So yeah, I wasn't sure. As well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Player yeah. manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Lorenzo's there. So, um, and then yeah, I've got the under 16s, mm. which is Dion mm. and another guy called uh, Matthew. Mm. Um, got my under 13s, mm. uh, which is Marshall and Chona. Uh, and have, you, you, have you guys got a direct line with Reading Football Club? Then I say. Not yet. What do you mean? Well, it's kind of the pitch. Okay, so the way it works, the, mm. the community trust mm. is just a branch of Reading Football Club. Mm. They're not technically attached yeah, to What I mean is that if one of your kids playing football is really good. Okay, so... so Are you going to get them into Reading? That's the question. I do not sell the club on this, okay. right? Because a lot of parents, oh yeah, Reading... Did yeah, you but from what you told me, like yeah, my yeah. boy plays football and I'm thinking like... Okay, yeah. how old is he? <laughs> uh, 11 okay 11 yeah so so um why I, I make it clear mm. i say look mm. if we see players that mm. are good enough mm. then through the community trust mm. who liaise with reading football club mm. i can get a scout yeah to come, so and, come and have a look okay yeah, yeah. Have a look. but you're not guaranteeing anybody anything it's not no, like no, you're no. not saying we got a we got a yeah yeah you're one, not the plug one thing about give back mm. i'm very careful mm. of how it's portrayed or yeah, yeah. what how I say or yeah, what I yeah. sell. I respect that. I don't want it to be a thing where, you know, I'm telling people, yeah, you get a trial, you get this. Mm. You know, no, no, no. no. This, is, this is how it runs. This is what it is. Mm. Take it for what it is. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, we touched on a lot today. Yeah. We touched on a lot today. Um, we'll call it a day, mm -hmm. but we're going to do this again. Yeah, if yeah. that's all right. Yeah. If that's all right. Like sporadically, we'll just sit down and have a chat and that. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna pop. Any anything else you want to tell the the audience? Um. Can, so, any plans coming up or any, anything? Yeah, anything you want to touch on? You know what I mean? Okay, I mean plans wise, like I was talking to you before, mm. we're in the process of turning the football club into a registered charity, mm. um, which will be massive for the community. Mm. Once we get our charity status. Mm. This now can create more opportunities in the in the community. Mm. Hopefully, create job opportunities, mm. funding. Right now, I don't receive any funding. That's crazy. So a lot is coming out of my pocket. So because you're not a charity, that's crazy. We're not a charity. We're not a CIC, which is like a community interest company. No, but you can. So, so but you can. I could. You, what I mean is that do you need to be registered right now to have a um? Have you got GoFundMe? No. So we've done GoFundMe's like for community projects, but you don't need a GoFundMe. You don't need a, a status to do a GoFundMe. That's what I'm saying. Like, so, so you could do that now, though, couldn't you? What do you mean? Just have a GoFundMe running. Yeah, anyone could. That's what I mean. But I wouldn't do a GoFundMe for that. You wouldn't? Mm -mm. Why not? I'm just like, no. I, I, do you know what it is? I've been quite content. And because I'm so passionate about mm. wanting to give back, mm. I've been content of just... Were you giving what you can... Yeah, yeah, I get, but it. I get it. I get longevity, it. Longevity, yeah. Obviously, people have explained mm. there's only so so long that can last for. I because I genuinely think people would give. I know they would. People would give. I would give. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, because I know it's gonna go to the right cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. But I f yeah, but I think yeah. When and as soon as you get a charity charity status, you just switch the bank account into a yeah, charity. Yeah. Let's carry on. To be fair, like. We've done so well so far. Yeah, that's cool. If, if Aaron broke, don't fix it. If Aaron, I'm, I'm just, yeah. People in the clubs, like Lorenzo, for example, mm. big him up. Mm. He's done a lot helping. Mm. He's manager of his team. He's got a lot of young boys as well. Mm. They've got a lot of respect for him because of the way he's treated them and looked mm. after them. So we've got people in the club mm. who help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you've got to support. You've got to support you need. You've got to support you need. Yeah, you don't need to go you, and do, yeah. go that way around. No, 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 I get it. I get it. cost of living, like, yeah. I know yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard already for people. No, I get it, I get it. Um, but yeah, once we get the charity status, mm. get the then ball, you can officially... Get the ball rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, going back to young people, mm. especially what's going on in Reading at the moment. Mm. Like I said, I moved here in 2008, mm. 2024 now. I've been here for a long period of time. Mm. I've seen a massive, massive increase mm. with young people getting involved with even knife crime, mm. getting involved with the drugs game, mm. crime as a whole. Crime as a whole. If, you, if you just whole. pick up the newspaper and read the newspaper, you can see... It's going downhill. Yeah. It's going downhill. Like it's like a child, mini child murders and all that. Yes. Yeah, right? Every year, every year, yeah. It's almost like a mini London. Yeah, yeah. And um, my advice to people is work with the young people that you have around you mm. at home or your neighbours mm. and have conversations with them, engage with them. Um, you know, ask them, how is school? Do you need help with anything not the school wise life wise mm. because young people need that support mm. they shouldn't be going to the roads to get that to support. get that yeah, support yeah, yeah. financially mm. mentally mm. physically, physically yeah, yeah. emotionally spiritually yeah. spiritually yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i think as elders in the community mm. we have to kind of just step up mm. and have these conversations with young people around us if we aren't able to work with youth and do sim things similar to myself. Mm. Um, but yeah. Calm. I'm going to pop your um, socials in the link bef link below the video also. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah, calm. Thank you for coming, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Nice, man. Guys, um, thank you for watching. Please also like, comment, share and subscribe we're trying to build our we, we, we're getting more views on the channel than subscribers so that means that people are watching that aren't subscribed to the channel it helps with the out the youtube algorithm so please like comment share and subscribe thanks a lot